Hi, I'm Pete Scargill and I'm doing some experimenting here with a Raspberry Pi and the O1 ODP3033 power supply. As you can see over on the left, the ODP3033 is a triple output power supply. Um, the outputs are in strange order. The third output is on the left, which is a bit odd. However, the third output uh, has simply two terminals and it is 0 to 6 volts at up to 3 amps. The other two outputs have a separate optional ground and they can go from 0 to 30 volts at up to 3 amps. It can do all of this all at the same time and as far as I can tell with absolutely no interference between the channels. In this case I'm going to be using the third output on the left to power the Raspberry Pi and I'm going to be specifically setting it to 5.1 volts. You'll see why in a minute. What I'm doing here is I've made the shortest possible USB um, lead from the power supply and I'm testing it first of all on a little cheap throwaway camera just in case that I got anything wrong which clearly I didn't because there's a light on um, and then I'll move across to the Raspberry Pi. The purpose of having a short lead as possible is to make sure it's not the lead that's causing any drops, if there are any. And that's, that's a continuous problem with USB leads. They do tend to drop voltage. And so do some USB power supplies. Hence the reason I'm using the 3033. Considering some of the claims for power used by Raspberry Pis, this Raspberry Pi 3 is sitting on its own, it's attached to nothing but power and network. And as you can see, the current consumption is only about, what, quarter of an amp, a third of an amp? That will of course peak from time to time, but throughout my experimenting here I didn't see anywhere near half an amp used by the Pi itself. So at a later point, um, I've added in um, some lead strip, which I'm going to be using in my experiments, to just to give the power supply a little something to do, really. So now that the Pi started up, I'm going to quickly flick across to show you um, another screen where I can remotely monitor that Pi to see whether it's had any power issues, whether there have been any instantaneous drops or anything like that. And while it's not immediately obvious, what you'll see on that screen there, the black screen in front of you, the last line of data says zero. That means there have been no drops at all, that the power supply, the power uh, of the Pi has stayed within reason all the way through this. And actually what you're looking at here, this video is very much shrunk down from the original testing I did. I've just taken the highlights. Um, and it's never budged once. Normally if you use a cheap USB power supply, you're seeing notifications of previous power drops or even throttling, but the throttling's more usually to do with temperature. But you certainly see indications, sometimes you'll see OX5005 instead of zero that I've got there. So I'm very happy with that result. Uh, short lead, decent power supply. Clearly, I'm not suggesting you use an expensive power supply normally with the Pi. It costs many times uh, what a Raspberry Pi does, but just for experimenting, it's worthwhile using the best you can get to uh, until you've got everything run the way you want, and then start narrowing down other issues you may or may not have. And so here we are, 5 metres of lead strip. I've just added that in, 12 volts on a maximum of 3 amps. Um, the Pi is running at the same time, no problems at all, and absolutely no variation in output voltage. I've also checked this on the scope, and there's, there's absolutely no variation whatsoever. So I'm very happy with that. In fact, later on I'll have probably end up with two lead strips playing with functions on the Pi. Um, Normally I would have separate power supplies for this, but it's handy to be able to do the whole thing on one, and especially a one that's well controlled while I sort out problems with software and the rest of it. The last thing I want to be thinking about is any issues with a power supply, and that's where the old one comes in rather handy. There is of course a lot more to this power supply than just three outputs. 
Um, you have all sorts of um, graphing and uh, you have USB control. You'll see the um, USB connector on the left hand side. Um, the knob at the top right allows you to ramp the voltage up and down or current depending on how, where the setting is totally independently for each channel but while I'm on just note that the outputs can be totally independent or they can be tracking etc. I would have left those LEDs on full time but of course the camera is not very good at handling things like that so you'll see towards the end I'll turn the lights back off and there it is. You may have noticed um, back there I plugged in um, a USB drive and that took the power consumption a little higher but had no effect whatsoever on the output voltage and that's important. So there's a monitor running there on the left, USB hard drive and in fact there's a little OLED display inside the Raspberry Pi. These things all vary the current consumption as time goes on. I would just like to very briefly show you there um, the fact that you can track the outputs, parallel or serial or not, as you prefer. That's just another feature. No doubt about it, this is not an inexpensive power supply, but it's very nice. It does the job and I found it rock solid. I hope you like it. I hope you like the video and I hope you'll come and see my blog. Thank you.